Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my modifying Q-Ground Control tutorial series. This is episode 2 where I will be demonstrating how to add a functional button to the user interface. If you haven't yet, you should watch the first episode where I go over general prerequisites and go through the build process, then come back and watch this episode. Before I begin, I'd also like to say I will have a copy of everything I do here in a repo on my GitHub. I will have that link down below from now on. A good place to start is to go over QML, the primary language used to create the user interface for QGround Control. QML stands for QT Modeling Language, and it's fairly similar to JavaScript in how it's used. Any web developers that have used a JavaScript framework like React or Vue will feel at home here. QML can implement both logic and design, making it easy to create functional elements because much of the logic can usually directly reference elements. Most of the user interface for QGround Control utilizes both C++ and QML for both logic and element creation, but that's outside the scope of this video and will be addressed in part next video. Also, before we get started, I want to emphasize something very important here. QGround Control is a large, open source program that constantly changes. Locations of files, images, and UI elements often change, and sometimes drastically. Knowing where to put elements and how to find where certain files are located is largely beyond the scope of this video and is a skill you should be learning on your own. You will get better and have a general idea of how to do this as time goes on, but it can be very daunting at first. I just want it to be known that you'll have to do some digging of your own if you plan on really doing much at all with QGround Control. Of course, links to forums in the PX4 Slack will be down below, which are often helpful if you have any questions as to where something might be located. All that being said, let's go ahead and get started and add a button to QGround Control. Here we are in Qt Creator. I am in main toolbar.qml, which is in resources, QGround Control.qrc, toolbar, toolbar.qml. What I'm going to be doing in this video is adding a button in the toolbar right here next to the analyze button and there are three primary ways of doing this and I'll be explaining the three different ways and why you might do them that way in a little bit but before we get into that there are a couple things that we'll want to understand one is this qgroundcontrol.controls and qgroundcontrol.palette because you're probably going to be using them a fair bit if you're modifying QGround Control. QGround Control controls is what imports QGC Flickable and QGC Toolbar button and any number of other custom UI elements in QGround Control. There are a multitude of reasons you might want to use the default UI elements, such as integration with light and dark mode, or just general uniformity, but there are times that you might not, and we'll go into that as we get to it. And then the palette is exactly that. It's a palette. And if we go back into QGround Control here, all of this, these colors, are the palette. And you can look at this yourself when you want, but it defines what things are supposed to look like. And it's also how it integrates the light and dark mode. I generally use the palette for most things for uniformity and for responsive UI when you have light or dark mode. And also you can see here just all the different aspects of UI that they have integrated. Those are the two basic things that we care about here that you're going to want to know as you get into UI design. There's a lot more to it, but that's outside the scope of this video. That's what we want to know here. So we're going to close QGround Control, and we're going to go ahead and add that button. So if we go past the Analyze button here, which is a ways down in the file, we are going to add a rectangle. The next thing to know here is IDs. So IDs are exactly that. They are an ID of an element that you can use to reference a variable or a property 
what have you, and be able to change it or read it at will. So we're going to set this to tut rect. IDs within a file do have to be unique, so we couldn't reuse analyze button, for example. Then what we're going to do is we're just going to format it. Formatting is something that just takes time to get used to. There are a lot of ways you can do things. There are, you just kind of have to think about it and just sort of tweak as time goes on. And you'll learn more and get more comfortable with it as you continue to modify Q ground control. It's, it's a very large world of figuring out how you want to do something and getting exactly the result you want. So just be patient with that. So we're going to fill the height of that little area and we're going to set the width of our little rectangle to the height that we have. And we're going to set the color to red. And if we start up the program again, You can see now we have a red rectangle to the right of the Analyze button. And that's exactly what we want. Now what we have to do is turn that into an actual button. First thing we're going to do is we're going to let it change colors. So we're going to give it a property. And we're going to give it a type of Boolean. We're going to name it is clicked. Is clicked. And we're going to default it to false. Properties can also be vars, because this is ultimately just JavaScript. It can also be ints, for example. But if you have something like a bool, QGroundControl, or I guess QT and QML will know, oh, you can just toggle this between true and false, which is what we want here. Next, we're going to add a mouse area. So the rectangle by default does not interact with the mouse. You need a mouse area which will process events like the mouse going over the button or coming off the button or clicking it for example. We're gonna take that and we're gonna set anchors.fill to the parent which is gonna take all the corners and stretch them out to whatever the parent item or element is in this case tut rect. And we are going to add this on clicked event that we see up here. That is your just standard click event. And for basic clicking, that's what you're going to use really every time. And then we can set tut rect dot is clicked equals not tut rect dot is clicked. And this is going to toggle it. It's a simple Boolean toggle that you've probably seen before. And now we have a click event. But we want to be able to see the outcome of that. So I'm going to add a question mark operator that I can never remember the name of. Boolean operator? I don't know. And we're going to say is clicked. And if it's true or false, we're going to set it to green or red, respectively. So if we start the program back up, you can see we now have a button that changes color when we click it. The reason I went through this way at first is A, it's the most basic way to add a button that will just do something. But it also gives us a better understanding of what's really going on here, of what a mouse area is, of how a button works, along those lines. It gives us an understanding of basic properties, which are just variables, and it gives us an understanding of IDs and just general interaction between all those different parts. This is a completely viable way to add a button. You can do it anywhere. It doesn't really rely on any custom Q ground control elements, which is nice. Do I recommend doing everything this way? Not necessarily. Again, I, I appreciate the uniformity of 
more proper elements, but it does work, and if you just want a basic button, this will get the job done. You don't have to change colors or anything like that for the purposes of this. That was just to know that our button worked. But moving on from that, what we're going to do is implement a button that comes with the Qt ecosystem. So we're going to add a button and replace that. We're going to give it ID of tut button. We're going to give it a width that is the same as the height. We're going to give it a text that says btn and we're going to give it an on click event. I'm not going to add anything here because we know how that works. And there's nothing I really want to implement there right now. But we can start up our program again. And now we have a button. This button is part of, like I said, the default Qt elements. It doesn't interact with the palette. It's just a button that has a few features built in. I would recommend you learn more about this on your own because there's a lot that can go into customizing this more advanced piece of UI. Um, again, it's default Qt, so you wouldn't look up QGround Control specific. But that is another way to add a button. Generally, you're going to have text, but you can add other things in there. But for just a basic label, so you know what that button does, this is another option that will achieve ultimately the same outcome. And last but not least, we're going to get into the quote-unquote proper way to add a button in QGround Control. There are a multitude of UI elements that act as buttons. Here we're going to use the QGC toolbar button for uniformity. There are all sorts of different elements that go into... Now where is it? Screen tools. Uh, controls, here we go. So if you go into QML, QGround control controls, you can see, for example, QGC toolbar button. You have a ton of different items here that act as UI elements. And you can look into them if you want. If you're just looking through different parts of the QML, just list of files in the program and you see something that interests you, just go ahead and look over here and understand what's going on. But there are a lot of them and I'm not going to go over them here. Again, I'm going to leave that to you as you learn and explore on your own. So obviously we have a duplicate ID here. We're going to have to change that to um, tut button. Layout fill out fill height true. We always want this to show, so we are just going to set visible to true, rather than it being when you show advanced UI, which is a toggleable setting. And then on clicked, we don't want to switch the view, and we don't want to show a window. But we do want it to reflect the change that we did click that button, which is what this is going to do, which is explained up here. And we do want to show that it's checked. And then one last thing we're going to do before we start up the program is look at QRCs. So you can see here we have QML images slash analyze.svg, which is a scalable vector graphic. Generally the way to make UI, but you can use PNGs for example. If you were to look in a file explorer, you would not see QML images slash analyze SVG anywhere. That is not a real directory. If we go to QGC images.qrc, you will see QML images, which we see down here, and then analyze.svg. And if we open up the QRC with the plain text editor, you'll see a ton of files. If we go and look for Analyze, you will see a file with an alias of analyze.svg and the source, which is 
source, UI, toolbar, images, analyze. And you have a prefix of QML images that we saw over here. All this is, is it's collecting images in different areas and giving it an alias that's easier to use. And is generally the recommended way to add images to QGround Control. Again, messing with this and learning about it is something that is going to take more than I have time for in this video. I'm giving a brief overview. So what I did was I added an image to source UI toolbars images crabs, which is an actual directory you will see if you open up the file explorer. And I gave it the alias of crabs.png. So if we look into QML images here, we can see uh, crabs.png. Uh, which so you have that alias here so if we go back to main toolbar we can change this to QML images which is already there and then crabs.png and now we can go we can select our crabs and make him a demon Mr. Krabs and that's how you add a an example of how you add a button that is from a QGround control custom element. That's only one of like 20 or 30, but it's an introduction and it's what I have time for in this video. Again, I want to really emphasize there's a lot that goes on here and it's going to take some learning and exploring on your own. And I encourage you to experiment with different ways of doing things because uh, you'll understand more about the program and what's going on, and you might find better ways to do things. Uh, there's a lot of resources online from the default QT documentation to the forums and the Slack that you can look into if you want to. And that is the last way that we have to add a button. The next video I have planned will be integrating what is called a plugin for QML, which allows C++ logic to integrate with QML. That is going to be another yet more advanced topic that's going to be harder to create a concise video on. So I'll see you guys in six months when I finally have that done. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, again, I would defer you generally to the Slack or the forums or Google in general. But you can always ask down below if you absolutely must.